most welcome to the fourth video of my lecture series on introduction to complex analysis. I hope you have seen my earlier videos. If not, the link is there in the description below. In this video, I will discuss a very important concept of stereographic projection and we will see how we can visualize complex plane from a totally different perspective and we will get certain thrilling results. At the end, we will see that infinity is only at a distance of two units from the origin, which might sound a bit weird, but by our definition of distance that we are going to introduce in this video, and by doing some beautiful calculation, we will end up with the result which I'm again repeating, says that infinity is only at a distance of two units from the origin. So let's start. Let us begin with the two images that you can see on screen. In the left side, you can see the image of Earth, which is spherical. And in the right side, you can see the map of Earth, which is planar. Now every place on earth is shown in the map. Uh, maybe this point, maybe this point is, is represented as this point in the map. Roughly speaking, exactly I don't know what will be the corresponding point. This may not be the corresponding point, but roughly speaking, uh, these two points uh, may correspond to each other in the sphere and the plane. Hence, we can say that every point on the sphere has a corresponding point on the plane. Now, the study of producing maps is known as cartography. We call that branch of study as cartography. Cartography. Several methods are used nowadays in cartography like aerial photography, satellite imagery, remote sensing, etc. But in this video, I shall discuss a very old method which evolved during the process of cartography and took the visualization of complex plane or argent plane into a whole new level. The method that I shall discuss in this video is known as stereographic projection. Stereographic, stereographic projection. This method was known to early Egyptians by the name of planisphere, planisphere, projection. Uh, we find a reference of this planisphere projection or the oldest surviving document containing reference to this planisphere projection is known as planispherium. Planispherium. Planispherium uh, written by Ptolemy. And the uh, era of Ptolemy was AD 100 to AD 170. In this video, we will see how the stereographic projection or planisphere projection can be used to visualize argand plane. Firstly, we will understand what is the stereographic projection. Then we will uh, understand how we can apply the stereographic projection in visualizing argon plane or complex plane. Now, often in complex analysis, we will be concerned with functions that become infinite as the variable approaches to a, a particular given point. To discuss this situation, we now will introduce the concept of extended complex plane. That means the complex plane C adjoined with the point infinity. 
Now, whatever that structure looks like, we call that structure as extended complex plane denoted by C infinity. That means the complex plane C with the addition of the point infinity. We are treating infinity as a point and we are thinking that we will add that point to the complex plane or uh, uh, to the set of complex numbers. I am adding one more point that is infinity and whatever structure we get, that structure is called the extended complex plane. Let us define by this symbol S. Let us define by this symbol S. The unit sphere in R3 given as x1, x2, x3 belongs to R3 such that x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square equal to 1 because I'm talking about unit sphere. Let S denotes the unit sphere in R3 centered at the origin. Now by N, let us denote the topmost vertical point of this S. That means N is 0, 0, 1. And certainly this will uh, belong to this S. Quite obvious from the definition of S. So by N, I am denoting this point. Now if I think, if I, tr if I identify, if I visualize this sphere as my S, if I visualize this sphere as my S, this sphere as my S, if I visualize in this way, then uh, if, if I consider this as the unit sphere, then actually by N, I am meaning this point. This point will be my 0, 0, 1. So that means actually N in this terminology will be the North Pole. So S is the unit sphere and N is my north pole so as per the as per the terminologies we have set here so this is my s now <clears throat> let us identify the complex plane let us identify the complex plane c let us identify the complex plane c as the plane given by x1 comma x2 comma 0 such that x1, x2 are real numbers. Can you tell me which plane I am talking about? x1, x2, 0? Yes, this is the horizontal plane that passes through the origin or, or in popular words actually I am uh, talking about uh, the xy plane kind of thing uh, which we popularly use to plot. So C, the complex plane or the argon plane I am considering as that two-dimensional plane, two-dimensional horizontal plane which passes through the origin. Now, if you have seen my second video of this series, I told you that in some aspect, the two-dimensional Cartesian plane and the Argand plane or the complex plane uh, behaves in a similar way or in some aspect, uh, their visualization will be exactly same or in some aspect they are isomorphic. That means we can visualize C, the set of uh, the complex plane as R2, the two-dimensional Cartesian plane in some aspect. I'm again having a cautionary uh, 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 remark here that they are not same. There are huge differences, but in some uh, uh, aspect they are same. That's why we can visualize a complex plane as a two-dimensional Cartesian plane. And here I am identifying that two-dimensional Cartesian plane as the horizontal plane passing through origin. And I'm identifying the complex plane as that. That means if I plot here, suddenly the plane that I'm referring to or the complex plane, if I plot here, will be the plane that passes through the equator, will be the plane that passes through the equator, will be a plane like this where it will intersect the sphere at this at this at this equator so this is my this is my c that i am referring to so this is my c this is my c 
the complex plane C. So now, uh, understand carefully this structure. My complex plane C is this one. My unit sphere is given by this S. My unit sphere is given by this S. Here S is actually, uh, 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 means you can see that is the earth, but consider this as a unit sphere only. Forget about earth now. Or have the visualization of earth and try to uh, uh, think it as a unit sphere. So this is my unit sphere. This is the complex plane, which cuts the unit sphere as the at the equator line, at the equator. That's, that, that is my basic setup. Now, even I just want to tell you, you can even visualize, you can even think uh, that this map, you have placed this map, you have placed this map in this position. You can even visualize in a way that you have placed this map in this position. Now, this map will not be the complex plane. There are huge differences. Uh, the complex plane spans towards infinity in all direction, but the map is certainly not. But to have a visualization, you can think that you have placed this map in this position. Now, the next point, if you think that you have placed the map in this position, is every point in this map has a corresponding point in this, uh, 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 in this sphere or in this spherical earth. Every point in the map has a corresponding point. Now the question is how to get that corresponding point or how you can plot every point on this spherical earth in this map if you visualize this plane as your map. Just think how you can plot every point or how you can find out the corresponding point of every point on this spherical earth on that plane on the plane or in our words in this terminology is s and c that we have defined the issue is how i can get a corresponding point from the plane c on the surface of the sphere s or how i can find out for a particular point z for a particular point say z in this complex plane c how I can find a corresponding point on this sphere at all? Can we find that? If yes, how we can find that? Fine. Let us see how we can find for, a, for every point Z in this complex plane C, how we can find a corresponding point on this sphere. Let us first uh, uh, see that. That can be done in so many techniques. But I will tell you one technique in this video. And that technique is actually will lead to the stereographic projection. What is the technique that I'll be telling in this video? It's pretty simple. Join this North Pole. Say this is my N actually, this North Pole as per our terminology. Join this North Pole N with Z by a straight line. So if I draw the straight line, If I draw the straight line, if I draw the straight line, this, this may be my straight line. Yeah, I, I told you already in my previous videos that my drawing skills are very poor. So consider this as a straight line, although it is not looking like a straight line. So I have joined this N and Z by a straight line and this straight line will intersect this sphere exactly at one point. Let us consider this is the point where this straight line joining this N and Z are intersecting this sphere. And certainly the, this kind of points will be unique. A straight line cannot intersect, this type of a straight line cannot intersect a sphere at two points. So uh, this will be unique. Let us call that this unique point is P. So, this gives that the corresponding point of the complex plane means if Z is a complex number in this complex plane C, the corresponding point on the surface of the sphere will be P, which you have obtained in this way. Now, if my point is on the equator line, if my point is on the equator line, let me change the color. 
if my point on this is on this equator line then can you tell me what will be the corresponding point again i will think about the straight line passing through this if this is my z now i'll be think about the straight line passing through n and z so the straight line will be somehow like this this will be my straight line again this straight line intersects the sphere exactly at one point and surprisingly that point is same as that so in this case if your point lies in equator line this p and z will be same so this is my p this is my z they are same now if the situation is a bit different now suppose uh, now suppose that uh, my z is lying at say at this point this place means inside the sphere z is lying inside the sphere but inside the sphere and on the complex plane so in that case if we again think about the straight line passing through n and z then the straight line will be then the straight line will be something like this where this straight line will intersect again at exactly one point and that one point will be uh, uh, located at some place like this so if this is my z this is p if z is like this this is your p the same thing uh, uh, and if if z is on the equator line then p will be at the same place and if z is uh, 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 as shown in the yellow color then the p will be lying in this position now if you look at these three points carefully then you can see if z is this at this place that means mod z will be greater than 1 for all such z which lies outside the sphere because the sphere is an unit sphere so if any z lies outside the unit sphere that means for that mod z will be greater than 1 now when mod z is greater than 1 your p the corresponding point on the surface of the sphere lies in the northern hemisphere for all these kind of points for all these kind of points z your mod z is equal to 1 so if your mod z is equal to 1 that means your p and z are same and for all these kind of points which are lying within the sphere and on the complex plane for this kind of z's your mod z for this kind of z's your mod z is less than 1 your mod z is less than 1 for this kind of z's your mod z is less than 1 so when mod z is less than 1 the corresponding point p lies in the southern hemisphere so that means depending on what is the location of the point in the complex plane your corresponding point on the surface of the sphere will be either on the northern hemisphere or will be exactly on the equator line or will be in the southern hemisphere that means every point on this complex plane will have a corresponding point on the surface of the sphere if we if we find the correspondence in this way so this is a fantastic correspondence that means now due to this correspondence we can visualize the complex plane as this unit sphere s in terms of the corresponding points so whatever that means the points in this unit sphere s and the points in the complex plane has a one to one correspondence so now for visualization purpose we can now visualize the complex plane as this s unit sphere now to add with this can you tell me what will happen if this mod z if i ask you now what if mod z tends to infinity that means this z is moving further in this complex plane further in any direction 
just think it's pretty simple when this z moves further this p will move more closer to n as, as z moves further mod z will tend to infinity and eventually this p will tend to n that means what you can say we can say that as z mod z tends to infinity this p will tend to n so as mod z tends to infinity this p will tend to n that means mod z tends to infinity means z is moving further and further that means z is also moving towards infinity so we can say this corresponds also associates infinity with this n that means this point n that means this point n which we have referred as 0 0 1 actually corresponds to infinity now where infinity lies infinity does not lie in this complex plane but as per our notation we have just discussed as per our notation we have just discussed infinity lies in the extended complex plane so with this understanding we can think now that this we can we can think we, we can visualize this plane c if we add infinity the same visualization remains for the extended complex plane denoted by c infinity so now we can say every point in c infinity has a corresponding point on this unit sphere s every point in the c infinity has a corresponding uh, a point in this unit sphere s that means i can say this c infinity we can visualize this c infinity can be visualized this c infinity can be visualized as s that means the c infinity can be visualized as as s that means for every point of uh, in c infinity i will get exactly one point in s so now we can say that the extended complex plane looks spherical with this identification so we got a very nice shape of this extended complex plane that the extended complex plane is spherical this projection that we discussed the way we are projecting points of a complex plane on the surface of a sphere is known as a stereographic projection this is known as the stereographic projection and by virtue of this stereographic projection or by this principle by the way we are projecting we have seen that every point on this extended complex plane can be identified with a point on this sphere on the surface of the sphere now the question is if a point z is given in c infinity how we will find out what is my corresponding point on the surface of sphere that means if z is given so the question is if this small z is given how to find out this p that is the question if this small z is given how to find out this p how we will do the calculation that's pretty simple let us do that now let us see if z is given how to find out p so this is my basic setup okay fine let us redraw the whole thing once again in a simple way sorry in a simple way suppose uh, mm, this is this is my sphere again i am admitting my drawing skills are pretty poor so bear with that so suppose that this is my sphere this is my sphere s this is my plane say i am saying c infinity this is my extended complex plane say c infinity 
and the plane intersects s at this particular point this is my this is my north pole n this is my point say z this is the straight line joining n and z this is the straight line joining n z n and z that means this will be my point this is my point p this is my point p so the question is if z is given to us how we can find out this point p that is the question fine now let us quickly recall uh, a, a very important and, uh, and a very easy formula in mathematics suppose i have two points p and q suppose i have two points p and q then the straight line passing through p and q then the straight line passing through p and q is given by t into p plus 1 minus t into q what is t t is a finite real number that means for a particular value of t i will get a particular point on this straight line for example when t is 0 you get q when t is 1 you get p so this is how we define a, a straight line passing through two points p and q now by the same logic the straight line passing through this n and z the straight line passing through this n and z Okay, this is the straight line passing through now the straight line passing through this n and z can be written as if i name that as l if i name this straight line as l then the straight line l passing through this n and z can be given as tn plus 1 minus t into z so in place of n and z we will we can we can put their coordinates where this minus infinity less than t less than infinity now here also let me tell you tp means I, I can put the coordinate of p and q and i can calculate so if i do the same thing here then this means this will be equal to the coordinate of n is 0 0 1 plus 1 minus t the coordinate of z if I if I consider this z to be if I consider this z this z as x plus i y the coordinate of this n is 0 0 1 if I consider z to be x plus i y then in the three dimensional plane if we consider the coordinate of z will be x comma y comma 0 pretty simple such that minus infinity less than t less than infinity so that means that is equal to if i do the calculation this will be 1 minus t into x comma 1 minus t into y comma t such that minus infinity less than t less than infinity so this is my straight line for example for uh, for 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 uh, say t equal to 1 can you tell me what we get if we place t equal to 1 for t equal to 1 for t equal to 1 what do you get when t is 1 for t equals to 1 we get pretty simple plug in t equal to 1 we get 0 1 minus 1 that is 0 uh, 0 1 so we get n for t equal to 1 we get n correct similarly you can see for t equal to 0 we get z now if the coordinate of this p if the coordinate of this p is x1 x2 x3 if the coordinate of this p is x1 x2 x3 that means we can say that at this point p t is equal to x3 
and accordingly by plugging in the values i can find out what is the value of mm, x x and y in terms of x1 x2 x3 we will do that later we will do that so this is how we can define this straight line passing through uh, 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 the points n and z now we intend to find out that if p is given if if z is given to us let us suppose let z equals to x plus i y is given and we intend to find out what is my p we then what is p then what is p x1 x2 x3 that we intend to find out if z equals to x plus i y is given then what is p x1 x2 x3 fine so as per this as per this as per this definition of this line we can consider that this x1 is 1 minus t into x at p at p this x2 is 1 minus t into y for a particular value of t and x3 is equal to t so that means at p i can write at p i can write at p at p i can write x1 is equal to 1 minus t into x x2 is equal to 1 minus t into y and x3 is equal to t now this p lies on the surface of this sphere now what is this sphere this sphere is actually an unit sphere this sphere is actually a unit sphere that means on this sphere on this sphere x x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square is equal to 1 because it is an unit sphere so if i plug in that now since i can write since p belong to s i can write x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square is equal to 1 which implies 1 minus t whole square into x square plus 1 minus t whole square into y square plus t square is equal to 1 now this again implies that 1 minus t whole square into x square plus 1 minus t whole square into y square is equal to 1 minus t square this implies 1 minus t whole square into x square plus y square is equal to 1 minus t square now it is given to us that z equals to x plus i y therefore mod z will be equal to square root of x square plus y square so if i apply this principle here <clears throat> this formula here we get what we get sorry we get this implies to 1 minus t whole square into so this will be now mod z square equal to 1 minus t square that means what i get we get that what do we get we get that mod z so so if we write 1 minus t square i'm writing t in this side and z i'll be writing the i'll be writing the other side 1 minus t whole square is equal to mod z square which implies if i apply the component to dividend rule which implies 1 minus t 1 minus t square minus 1 minus t whole square divided by 1 minus t square plus 1 minus t whole square equals to mod z square minus 1 divided by mod z square plus 1 which implies uh, if i do this calculation i will get uh, 1 minus t square minus 1 minus t square plus 
2t divided by 1 minus t square plus 1 plus t square minus 2t is equal to mod z square minus 1 divided by mod z square plus 1 which implies if I do the calculation then this one and this will cancel it will be cancelled out this will cancel out so what remains minus 2t square so if I check minus 2t common then this will be t minus 1 divided by 2 minus 2t 2 minus 2t if we take minus 2 common then this is again t minus 1 oh great that is equal to mod z square minus 1 divided by mod z square plus 1 uh, everything gets cancelled out almost except this t so we get t is equal to fantastic mod z square minus 1 divided by mod z square plus 1 so fantastic that means to get this p actually we were searching for to get this p we were searching for this t because once i find out what is t for this particular p and if z is given i know what are the values of x and y so i can very easily find out what is x1 x2 x3 therefore what you can write now therefore you can write now that x1 that x1 is equal to what that x1 is equal to 1 minus what is t t is mod z square minus 1 by mod z square plus 1 so 1 minus mod z square minus 1 divided by mod z square plus 1 into into what into x into x that is equal to that is equal to uh, if i do this calculation mod z square will cancel out this will be 2 so 2x divided by mod z square plus 1 now uh, if you think further that we have written z equals to x plus i y therefore we can write z bar is equal to x minus i y therefore z bar will be x minus i y therefore if i if we add the two what do we get we get this i y cancels out that means 2x equal to z plus z bar so we get 2x equals to z plus z bar and if we subtract we will get 2y so 2y will be equal to uh, minus needs to be minus i so needs to be adjusted so that is minus i into z minus z bar so this is my 2x and this is my 2y 2x if you add the two z and z bar and 2y if you subtract the two and then multiply by minus i in both the sides you will get this so now if i place this two i get if i place this two i get x1 from the above x1 now i can write as x1 is equal to z plus z bar divided by mod z square plus 1 so i have got x1 and if z is given to us so we can very easily find out what is our x1 similarly if we do again the same calculation x2 is as per the formula x2 is 1 minus t into y see the uh, uh, underlined yellow underlined formula x2 is equal to 1 minus t into y therefore if i plug in there x2 will be similarly x2 will be the calculation in the bracket will remain same so i will get a 2 so x2 will be 2y 2y divided by mod z square plus 1 and 2y means as per whatever is written above minus i into z minus z bar divided by mod z square plus 1 and x3 is as per the formula x3 is actually t therefore we can say and therefore 
x3 is equal to t. t means we have just found out mod z square minus 1 divided by mod z square plus 1. So these are my x1, x2, x3. If z is given to us, we can very easily find out this point x1, x2 uh, means this point p by calculating x1, x2, x3 in this formula. So we can write, so we can write that, so we can write that this small z if given to us, this z corresponds to the point p. How this p is defined? This p is defined as the formula we have just found out. This p is defined as z plus z bar divided by mod z square plus 1 comma minus i into z minus z bar divided by mod z square plus 1 and mod z square minus 1 divided by mod z square plus 1. So if z is given to us, if this z, if this z is given to us, if this point z which belong to this C is given to us, then we can very easily calculate its corresponding point on S, that is P, by using this formula. So this creates a nice correspondence between the complex plane and uh, uh, this and this uh, uh, unit sphere S. If you get any point in the complex plane, C, you get a corresponding point in this uh, uh, unit sphere S by this formula. Now, how to do the reverse thing? Means if, if P is given to us, if P is given to us, then how to find out? So the question is now if P that is X1, X2, X3 is given, is given then how to find out z then what is z how to find out z so how we can do the reverse thing this is again even simpler than this if you look at if you look at this particular formula which you have obtained from the equation of line if you look at this particular formula these three if you look at these three formula, if you look at these three formula, specifically if you look at this one, specifically if you look at this one, this one, you will understand how if x1, x2, x3 is given to us, how we can find out z. So let us see how. If p is given to us, then how to find out z? Pretty simple. Set t is equal to x3. Why? Look at the formula which we, we, we were referring to. Here x3 is t. So this motivates us in setting x3 as t. So let us set t as x3. Now if I, if I plug in the values of this t as x3 in the, in the previous two forms, that is for x1 and x2, what I get? Let us see. Set t equals to x3. Then what does my x1? then x1 is equal to 1 minus t into x that is equal to 1 minus x3 into x which implies x is equal to x1 by 1 minus x3. So if p is given to you, you know what is your x1, x2, x3. Plug in the value of x1 and x3, get x. And, and x2 will be, x2 is as per the formula, 1 minus t into y, which, which is equal to 1 minus x3 into y, which implies y is equal to x2 divided by 1 minus x3. So if p is given, you can simply plug in the values of x2, x3, you can get y. Therefore, what is z? Therefore, what is z? 
therefore z is equal to x plus i y that is equal to x1 divided by 1 minus x3 plus i into x2 divided by 1 minus x3. So, if p is given to us, I know what is x1, x2, x3, I will simply plug in the values in this formula and I will get z. Therefore, I can write that if p which is x1, x2, x3 is given to us, if this point of s is given to us, then I can clearly find out what is z and z will be x1 by 1 minus x3 plus i into x2 divided by 1 minus x3 x2 divided by 1 minus x3 in this complex plane C. In this complex plane C. So, if a point in S is given to us, we can, by using this formula, we can clearly find out what is the corresponding point in C. And by the earlier one, if a point in C is given to us, we can find out what is the corresponding point in S. So, this two this to clearly enable us, this to clearly enable us, this to clearly determines a one-to-one -one correspondence between the planes, between the unit sphere S and the uh, 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 complex plane or the argand plane C. If we are given a particular point, this to clearly tells us what will be our corresponding point if we consider a point from the complex plane C or a point from the uh, uh, unit sphere S. So if S is given to us, we can find out, uh, if a point in S is given to us, we can find out what will be the corresponding point in C and vice versa. So now with more conviction, we can say that we can now visualize the complex plane or the argand plane with uh, as a unit sphere because I can now clearly say which point will correspond to which point. So now, from now on, to us, the complex plane or the argon plane will look like a unit sphere only with the understanding. If we consider instead of the complex plane, if we consider the extended complex plane, means if I consider infinity again, then this infinity corresponds to the point 0, 0, 1. That means with this understanding even, we can say that we have a correspondence of C infinity. We have a correspondence or we have a identification or visualization of C infinity as the unit sphere S where any, any, any uh, uh, where the infinity is to be identified as, as the North Pole 0, 0, 1. And any other point, for any other point, the corresponding point can be evaluated by the formula we have stated so far. So this is how we can visualize a complex plane as an unit sphere. Now, now it's very, very, very interesting that the argon plane whose structure we were discussing so far looks like a unit sphere. A unit sphere is very much tangible. We can, we can visualize it is very much conceivable, uh, uh, so, so the complex plane got a nice shape. Now let us do a bit further. Let us now, let us now impose a concept of distance in this complex plane. What is the concept of distance? Now, if I have two point, if I have two point Z and Z prime in this extended complex plane C infinity, if I pick up two points, z and z prime from this extended complex plane C infinity, then the distance of z and z prime, I'm denoting by dz z prime, I'm measuring that as the distance to be, the distance of this to be the distance, to be the distance of the corresponding 
of the corresponding points in S. Now, understand, listen, uh, uh, look at everything very carefully because we are going to get, a, get an astonishing result at the end. The thing will be very, very interesting. So be very, very careful. Let dz z prime denotes the distance between z and z prime. So this is the distance of z and z prime. How we are measuring the distance of z and z prime? We are measuring the distance of z and z prime uh, as the distance of their corresponding points on the unit sphere. Because you know every point in C infinity will have a corresponding point in the unit sphere. So I am considering that as my, uh, 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 the distance of those two points as my distance of z and z prime. I am defining this uh, concept of distance in this context. Why the motivation is pretty simple? Because on the unit sphere, we can measure distance very easily. That is the motivation. Now, let us consider that this z corresponds to the point given by x1, x2, x3 in S. And this z prime corresponds to the point p prime, which is say x1 prime, x2 prime, x3 prime in S. So this is my z and this is my z prime. Now, therefore, um, since these two are points on this sphere S, their distance can be very measured very easily. The distance, therefore, dz z prime, as per the definition, will be the distance of these two points placed on the surface of the sphere and that's why that will be equal to x1 minus x1 prime whole square plus x2 x2 minus x2 prime whole square plus x3 minus x3 prime whole square whole to the power half. So this will be the distance of these two points on the sphere and as per the definition that is the distance between z and z prime as per we are defining here. Now, uh, therefore, d z z prime whole square will be equal to uh, x1 minus x1 prime whole square plus x2 minus x2 prime whole square plus x3 minus x3 prime whole square. If you split the whole square, you will get x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square plus, I'm jumping just one step, x1 prime square plus x2 prime square plus x3 prime square. If you, if you write, if you split and write, you can very easily understand that we will get this one at the end. Minus 2 into x1, x1 prime plus x2, x2 prime plus x3, x3 prime. Very good. Now, these, uh, this, is, uh, this is one. Why this is one? Because the point P lies on the surface of the sphere S, which is an unit sphere. So this will be one. So this gives us 2 minus 2 into x1, x1 prime plus x2, x2 prime plus x3, x3 prime. Now, as discussed earlier, we know that, as discussed earlier, we know that this uh, x1, what is our x1? As per the formula we discussed just before this. So we know that my, sorry, we know that our x1 is this, x2 is this, x3 is this. So if we use this formula, then I can write, if I use this formula and plug in the value of x1, x1 prime, etc., this can be written as 2 minus 2 into 2 into uh, z plus z bar divided by mod z square plus 1 into z plus z bar by z prime plus z prime bar, sorry, z prime plus z prime bar 
because x1 prime x2 prime x3 prime are the corresponding point of z prime mod z prime square plus 1 plus x2 x2 will be minus i into just have a quick look at what is x2 x2 is minus i into z minus z bar by mod z square plus 1 so this will be minus i into z minus z bar divided by mod z square plus 1 into minus i into z prime minus z prime bar divided by mod z prime square plus 1 plus x3 that is okay mm, let me write in this place i don't have space in the right side so plus Hope you will understand mod z square minus 1 divided by mod z prime square plus 1 into because x3 if you have a doubt you can check here x3 is mod z square minus 1 by mod z square plus 1 so mod z square minus 1 by mod z uh, prime square sorry 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 sorry, sorry. i missed here mod z square plus 1 i don't know why i wrote a prime there mod z prime square minus 1 divided by mod z prime square plus 1 so this so this now if you multiply if you multiply this this pair of terms in each of the summons if you multiply this pair of terms and if you simplify i am not doing that I am I'm, I'm sure you all can do that. Just multiply these pair of terms and write everything together and simplify. You will get, if you do that, you will get 4 into mod of z minus z prime whole square divided by 1 plus mod z square into 1 plus mod z prime square so 1 plus mod z square. actually the denominator you can see the denominator will be same in every terms the product of these two will be denominator so that is coming in the denominator and rest if you simplify you will get the numerator accordingly so this is our d z z prime whole square therefore we can write therefore what do you get Therefore, if I now write d z z prime, therefore what will be the distance of z and z prime? This is d z z prime whole square. Therefore, d z z prime will be 2 into 2 into mod of z minus z prime divided by divided by 1 plus mod z square into 1 plus mod z prime square whole to the power half so a beautiful formula that means by virtue of this formula if we are given if we are given any two point in the complex plane or to be more specific in the extended complex plane if you are given any two point in the extended complex plane by virtue of this formula we can find their distance using the concept of stereographic projection that we have discussed somehow we can have a very rough way we can have at least a visualization of distance between two points in this way if we if we consider if we remember this formula if z and z prime are given we can very easily find out their distance where remember this z and z prime this z and z prime are points in c infinity now you can ask me that if this z prime is infinity then what will happen that is even more interesting now suppose this z prime is infinity 
Now suppose this z prime is infinity. Let this let this z prime is equal to infinity. Let this z prime is equal to infinity. I'm not writing equal to infinity because we don't write anything equal to infinity. Now uh, let this z prime is uh, equivalent to infinity. Actually, I can write equal to infinity because in my extended complex plane, infinity I'm treating as a point. So from that perspective, I can write. But still, as a popular notation, we don't write uh, anything equal to infinity. So anyway, let z prime is equal to infinity in, in the extended complex plane. Then uh, let us see how the whole concept and let us see how the whole concept changes. So that means if I consider, let us do the thing here. If I consider z prime is infinity, if this z prime is, if this z prime is infinity, where is z prime? If this z prime is infinity, can you tell me what will be the corresponding point of infinity in S? Yes, the north pole. That means x1 prime will be 0, x2 prime will be 0, x3 prime will be 1. That means if this is becoming infinity, then this one will be 0, this one will be 0, this one will be 1. So the whole formula, if I write once again, just look at the thing. By plugging in x1 prime 0, x2 prime x0, x3 prime 0, if I write the whole formula again, then what I will get? I'll get d, sorry. I will get, I'll get d of z infinity. I'll get d of z infinity is equal to, is equal to d of z infinity whole square. Let us write a whole square is equal to x1 square just just look at the formula above once again so d of z z prime whole square will be x1 square plus x2 square because x2 prime is equal to 0 plus x3 minus 1 whole square so x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 minus 1 whole square that means this will be equal to x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square plus 1 minus 2x3. That is equal to, uh, again, x1, x2, x3 are point on the, uh, uh, is actually, uh, x1, x2, x3 corresponds to the coordinate of P, and this P lies on the surface of the sphere S, so this is 1. Therefore, this will give us 2 minus 2x3. That means 2 minus 2 into what is x3? x3 we know is x3. What is x3? x3 is, let us look, mod z square minus 1 by mod z square plus 1. So x3 is, yes, x3 is mod z square minus 1 by mod z square plus 1. So if we write here, we get x3 is mod z square minus 1 divided by mod z square plus 1, which is equal to uh, 2 mod z square will cancel 2 to 4. So 4 divided by mod z square plus 1. Therefore, we get, what do we get? Therefore, we get the distance of infinity from any point z in the extended complex plane as per the definition of distance in this context will be 2 by mod z square plus 1 whole to the power half. So, a beautiful observation and we are hearing how to measure the distance of infinity from any point z. You plug in the value of z, you get what is your what is your distance of this particular point uh, of, of, of infinity from your choice of z. So this stereographic projection and this concept of uh, 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 this concept of distance uh, uh, enables us to do a tremendous thing. First of all, to visualize how argon plane looks like even after this even we can find the distance of two points 
in the Argon plane. Even we can measure the distance of infinity from any other point in the Argon plane, which is amazing. For example, if we plug in z equals to 0, that means origin, then what do we get? We get the distance of 0, that is origin and infinity. Can you tell me will be equal to what? If z is 0, what will be mod z? Absolutely correct, equal to 0. So the distance of origin and infinity will be 2. That means this is a beautiful, a remarkable result, probably a thrilling result. I am very much thrilled. I don't know how thrilling you are feeling right now, how thrilled you are feeling right now. But I am very much excited that we have got a tremendous result that the distance of infinity from the origin is 2 units by the definition of distance that we have introduced here. So, it's a tremendous observation. It's a tremendous thing. Somehow, we uh, it feels that, mm, yes, uh, we have been able to visualize the whole complex plane and we have to measure distance of any two points. Even we can measure the distance of infinity from any point. But remember, that is categorically as per the concept of distance introduced here. So, at this note, I would like to finish this video that as per the concept of distance we have introduced, you can measure the distance of infinity from any point. For example, the distance of infinity from the origin is 2 units. So, I hope you are now thrilled and you are now excited to calculate distance of infinity from any point in the complex plane or extended complex plane of your choice.